for today we are teaching on. This is still for the God inside minded uh, that the Holy Spirit indwell us. I believe that the church should become consciousness of the Holy Ghost dwelling in you. The spirit of the mind. We have a spirit mind. Our mind, because we have the mind of God. The Bible said we have the mind of Christ. There's no way that I can have a natural mind when the Bible declares that we have the mind of God, making us spirit the minded. Whether we live in it, whether we obey the spirit of the Holy Spirit, but we have the mind of Christ. So today we will focus on the Holy, the Holy Ghost power. See, we all have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, but the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost is not operating in us. We allow the enemy of our flesh to get away with so much in our life and we are supernatural people. We are born of a God that never lost the case. We are the people of God. We are called out by God. We was not called by a human. We did not call God. He called us out of darkness. Jesus. God was not in darkness. We were in darkness. Yes. So we didn't call God. We didn't find God. He found us. Oh, oh, hallelujah. The Bible says, giving thanks unto God who called us. He called us. He called each one of us that here today and each one of us that listen today. He called you out of a place that you couldn't get out of on your own. Jesus. Only the supernatural power of God and grace call us out by the power of the Holy Ghost and translated us into a place that you and I could not translate ourselves into. That place is called the kingdom of his dear son. Only the power of the Holy Ghost can transfer your spirit into the place of God dear son. So in the book of Luke, verse 3, 16, it says, John said to the people that was all gathered around John being baptized, John said unto them, I baptize you with water. But I want you to know one thing. There is one coming. It's greater than I. Mm -hmm. There's one coming that's going to baptize your spirit. Water is just water. Amen. Water cannot change you. It can cleanse your outward man, but it cannot cleanse your inward man. Jesus. He said there's one coming. When he come, he shall, no doubt in my mind, John says, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus. Apparently, we need both. Mm -hmm. One thing to have the Holy Ghost, uh, and then one thing to be on fire for God in the Holy Ghost. God. So he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Supernatural power. Power beyond any man's imagination. Power that cannot be stopped. The Holy Ghost power can never be stopped by a human. See it. You can see his action. You can see the Holy Ghost moving in flesh, but you cannot see the Holy Ghost. You can sense his awesome power. You can sense his presence, a presence that no human can come to up, no human can play up. It's a presence that came from heaven on high is a present that get up on man's body, dwelling man that you cannot deny that you have been in the presence of the almighty God. 
the Holy Ghost. He said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now, John baptism was with water. What happened? He immersed the body into water. And he brought the body back up. But nothing happened to the spirit. John baptism was a, a sign of repentance. Preparing yourself for the coming of the Holy Ghost. Jesus. John said, I, I can only baptize you with water. I'm not your Holy Spirit. That's why I teach that I cannot change you. Mm -hmm. So you cannot hold me responsible for the way you live. Amen. No person, you people will do it, think it's the pastor, think it's the lead. No. Only the Holy Spirit can change a spirit. I do not have the power to change a spirit. Come on. Only the Holy Ghost can change you. That's why it dwells in you. I can only do what John said he could do. Baptize you a teach to your flesh. Mm -hmm. But I cannot change your flesh. There's a spirit dwelling in you. That your flesh has to believe the word of God. Ooh, and once you believe the word of God, the Holy Spirit that dwell in you will change your outward man. And uh, the spirit. Jesus said, that which is spirit is spirit. That which is flesh is flesh. So I can only teach to your flesh. But if your faith is in the word that I'm teaching, it will go to your power of the Holy Spirit. And you'll leave here with the mind to change. You'll leave here with the mind to, to live right. You'll leave here with the mind to walk in forgiveness. Because the Holy Spirit can change you. I can teach to you. You might come under conviction. But until the Holy Spirit get involved in your conviction, Amen. you will never change. Amen. Act 1 and uh, 5 says, Jesus said, John baptized with water. Yeah. But ye you, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. What is good? But if never change you. You know, in the old days, they used to say, well, you came and you was baptized. <laughs> One of the favorite bishops used to say that. And you were baptized as a, a you, you was emerged in the water as a sinner, a evil person, however they put it. They said when you came up, you were still the same because the water could not change you. It's just a sign of telling people. I am surrendered to God. But until you surrender, it means absolutely nothing. Live a committed life to God, a committed life to God, speaks louder than that water that just went over you. Right. When you change the way you live it, and I, I am fully persuaded, every person in here, every person that listens today, you have a power in you that can change you to be everything that God called you to be. God said, take off the old you and put on the new you. You can do it with no effort at all. You just have to make up your mind. There's no fighting, no devil. It's no going through, no long change. Just make your mind up in the power that's available. God has given us the Holy Spirit. That is a supernatural power. Do you realize who is dwelling in you? Do you realize the type of power that we have? We have a power that beyond any man imagination dwelling in you. You are able to do exceedingly put it above all that you can ask. Call to the power that works in us. We can. We are not helpless people. That's right. How in the world can I be a helpless person when I have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost dwelling in me? They both dwell together. One does dwell without the other. One. If you have one, then you have all. Amen. Unstoppable power. Unlimited power. 
stop ourselves based on how we live. We figure if we live a certain way, the power will not work. The power will work when you're in your lowest depths of sin. That's when it's supposed, that's when it works better Amen. to get you out. Amen. Oh my God. I, 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 I just know it's the time. I, I just know we're living in a season where the Holy Ghost wants to take over. The Holy Ghost wants to do and be what God sent the Holy Ghost to do. If God sent the Holy Ghost to comfort me, to teach me, to lead me, to guide me, to bring all things to my remembrance, then why should I knock myself out trying to lead myself? I cannot lead myself. That's why the Bible says, in all that ways you are not as God. Say, so lead not to your own understanding. Because your own understanding would take you to the Freak streak off the structure. He said, but all your ways, not some of your ways. We just have ways we acknowledge God here. He said, in all, all me all. He said, in all your ways of knowledge, God, the God that we sing about, the God that we shout about, the God that we pray, the soon coming king, the glory of God, the almighty God, the bright in the morning star God, the God that's above all God, there's no God like our God, there's no God. Person 
to withstand you, brother. We, 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 we talk out of our greatness that we have. Mm -hmm. There's nobody can defeat you. We defeat ourselves. And I always tell you, you build your own wall in your own head. Yeah. You build it yourself. You build it from the thing that you think about doing today that you do not cast down. And they get, they, 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 they make their way into the Bible, call it the lust of the flesh. And they war against you. The Bible said the flesh war against the spirit. What is war? Those evil thoughts, those negative thoughts that you kept in your mind, now is war against the Holy Spirit. That's all that's going on. We create our own war. We create our own destruction. It's not the devil. We just fight the devil. We just fight the devil. Why are you fighting him? The Bible said he stripped Satan of all his power. Made a show over the eye of him. Left him helpless. Only people that have a problem with the devil is the unsaved. Jesus. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. Supernatural power. The word of God declared that. Paul said, no, I walk in the flesh. But I'm not. That's, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. I think it's 4 and 5. He said, well, though we walk in the flesh, I'm not born with my flesh. Because I lose every time because I'm fighting something that should be fighting. All right. Amen. Yeah, God. God of us. See, all that negative teaching through the years, through the years, through the years, we tend to think that the devil is so strong, we got to wake up in the morning fighting him. The Bible declares, fight a good fight of what? Faith. Faith. Do that sound like fight a good devil? No. He said, fight a good fight of faith. Faith in what God has done for us. Faith in that his power is greater than any power in the universe. So Paul said, Peter, John said, Paul, said, I, yeah, I walk in the flesh, but I am not spending all my days fighting with my flesh. He said, oh, why? He said, because this weapon that I have is a spiritual weapon. He said, and it's mighty to God. What? Put it out of strongholds. Yeah. Casting down imagination. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Let this not just go and do exactly what the word of God said for us to do. I'm telling you, you'll live a victorious life. Yeah, but yeah, when you yeah. try to do things yourself and think that you can stand against your own flesh, how can you stand against yourself? You cannot. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says we be led by the Spirit. We shall not walk. Fulfill, Fulfill the, the lust of the flesh. flesh. What spirit are you talking about? He's talking about the Holy Ghost. That we led by the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible said, How be it when the Holy Ghost come? He is your comforter. He will teach you. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will bring all things to your remembrance when he comes. So if I be led by the Holy Spirit, he will not lead me into destruction. The Holy Spirit will only lead me based on the word of God. And the Holy Spirit will give me instruction, cast that spirit down, pull down that stronghold in the name of Jesus. You great is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. We always sing about it. We shout about it. But do you really, 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 truly, truly believe that the greater one lives in you? Do you really believe it? Oh, it sounds good. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome the world because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do you really believe that? Do you really know who is he that is in you? Do we stand up and face any tribulation and say, you can't be greater than me. You can't be greater than the one that dwell in me. I can't you. Well, I can allow you to exalt you in my mind that you're so great. And then I create a warfare in my head. But no, keep him where God placed him. Under your feet. <laughs> Under your feet. We, it, it's so much that I'm realizing you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in your Bible. Yeah. So for uh, that God, but to God was rich in mercy, where he, he raised us, mercy raised us up together with Christ. 
in Ephesians. And he made us set with him what? In heavenly places. <laughs> Do you believe that you set me in heavenly places? <laughs> heavenly places with who? With Christ, Christ Jesus. You know it. What when the revelation knowledge and the reality come alive in your mind, whatever comes to your mind is negative and try to talk you out of who you are. You remember, wait a minute. I'm in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I'm seated with him in Christ Jesus. So I have authority over everything. Because heavenly places, the Bible says in Ephesians 1 and 20, is for above all principality and power. But see, principality and power is not the believer problem. The Bible says, but Dr. Betty, God said we fight again. No, you fight for your unsaved. The unsaved have problem with principality and power. Not the believer. Think about it. I don't have to fight principality and power. I'm saved. But my brother is not saved. But now I have to fight principality and power and pull down the stronghold for over bubble life. <laughs> it's the world. The unsaved in your household that, that, that dealing with principality and power is not the Christian. But we start fighting. Oh, any little thing come up, we start pulling down and pulling down. No, what, God said, what are you guys doing? You will see it with me in heavenly places. Fall above all principality and power. I've given you everything that you need to succeed in life. I've given you the keys of the kingdom. I told you whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I told you whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I told you that in a nay and all these things you more than a conqueror. I told you that I would give you the victory in every situation. It's going on. Line. We have the victory. That's right. Amen. So now thanks be unto God which went always give us the victory in every situation. So always be always, always be always. Not some of the time. We make it some of the time. Because we love to have Bill a war in our head. Like we have to fight to receive from God. We have to struggle to receive from God. Ephesians 1 and 3 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings, physical and spiritual blessings. Where are the blessings? He said, in heavenly places. Where are the believers? In heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Amen. So where's the fight coming in? Uh -huh. we, I mean, it's so much change that we've been listening to that. We have to do this, do that, to receive from God. It's not all like that to receive from God. Just believe. Amen. Make it so hard to receive from God. Just make it hard in people like to receive from God. Oh, if you don't hit step one and three, you that probably have never, I have never seen in my Bible steps. Have you? Are there any steps in your Bible? No. All they said, whatsoever you ask for Father in Jesus' name, that he would do. Ask anything in his name and he should do it. Do you see it? As he's asking step 10, step 5. It just made it so hard for the body of Christ. So we think that we have to have a step. We have to continue confessing over and over. How many times have you confessed salvation? Do you confess salvation every time you come to church? But well, why do you think you have to confess everything else over and over and keep it in your mind? Keep it in your mind so God won't forget that it's in your mind. Just like salvation. You confess it one time and you start living a salvation life. That's how you receive everything from God. The Bible says in your Bible, so all the promises of God in him are what? Yay! 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 To what? To the glory of God. Do you see any steps there? Uh-uh. All right, brother. Well, we've been reading so many books thinking that, you know, I, I, I'm not a critic of people, but I'm telling you, we've been reading so many books think this book is greater than the Holy Bible to teach us how to receive from God. It is so simple in your Bible. He said, does not receive? Give. And it what? Shall be given. That's too easy, isn't it? <laughs> we always think we have to get back hard way. He said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Ah, good measure. First down. 
Shake it together. Run it over. Run it over. To men give into your bosom. Oh, that's not good enough for us. It got to be something else. This is too good, God. This is this too good. I had something else. I need to make it hard for me to get this. Then I feel like I'm earning it. I need to just do something else. Give. The spirit of giving possess supernatural power. More power than any step can ever possess. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Shall mean no doubt. Can't put nothing to it or add to it. It shall be given unto you. Amen. But we give, then we get a book. The, the whole God responsible. This is what the book said. Listen, I'm telling you. God is not confirming man's idea. All right. Uh, if he was confirming it, all of us would have been most time rich by now. Because <laughs> we step and we step and we step and we fall and we step. I should be the richest woman that ever walked. I should be able to pay off the church, pay off your house, and pay off everything, everybody in here. I should be able to take care of you the rest of your life. Because I have books. Step, 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 step. Then I would back, back, go back to square one. Simply trusting God. Amen. Amen. That's it. And I'll tell you one more thing. I'm going to close out and we continue this. Every person in here, every person that listened today, you have supernatural power. You don't have to get any more power. You don't have to try to build your friend or something. Now, it was, all I had to do was confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, right? Now that's the time I should have to go. To, I should have went to school and had steps to build my faith up to believe that He was going to forgive me for my sin, right? You did all this sin and all this homemonger, all that stuff that you done, and then go just made a confession of faith and believe what God done. Supernatural faith. Yep. Now that you believe God, everything else you got to go and find somebody else to help you. <laughs> and if I test it, you said, just as I am, with that one plea that his blood was shed for me. And I come before you, Lord, asking you, and I'm repenting of my sin, ask you to come into my life. Did you read any book? No. Did you need any steps? No. You just only believe what God has done for you in Christ Jesus yes. at the cross. And now you go around telling people I'm saved. Hop up to the shop. I'm saved. Yes. On my way to heaven. Well, how many steps do you take? I didn't have to take no steps. I didn't have nothing to offer God. I love that son that the young lady said, all I had to offer was a broken heart. All I had to offer him was a sinful life. And he saved me. Yeah. But now, there have to be a, I don't know, with a slap in the face to God. Now, God said, so why do you think? The same Bible. Why do you think everything else I made it so hard for you and made salvation so easy? And I'm going to get to tell you about the supernatural faith, Romans 12 and 3. The Bible says God has dealt to every man. What? The measure of Now, if God gives you something, it's just natural. That's right. It's supernatural, right? Supernatural, yes. So you, you, we all have supernatural faith. Stop trying to get faith. You have all you're going to get. Have you noticed that you don't have any more faith all this trying? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> the Bible simply says have faith what? In, in God. God. Have faith in God, not faith in your faith, not trying to make your faith strong. It's just this simple. It's just simple like a child can understand it. He didn't make the Bible hard for us to understand. He didn't make it hard for us to receive from him. He, God, he made it so easy. And not only that, he put something in us. And it called the Holy Ghost. So we will continue teaching on that. He just made it simple. But we figure it's like, man, anybody ever give me anything? You know how we think. So we figure we work hard, slave hard, do all of that. We know now. And then blessing still doesn't come. Then you get upset with God. I trying. No. Disbelieve is not trying. Simple. Believe. The Bible says, if I can believe what? All things are possible. Did he say, if I hit? Ten books, read up on it. No. Now you figure that these books are natural men wrote with his own natural understanding. That is the what he experienced. I can't go and be him. I might read it. It's good. 
that he's probably, but I cannot follow his life because the Holy Spirit deals with individuals differently. Amen. I can't tell you this is what I've done and God bless. And you said, I'm going to do the same thing. No, you're not Dr. Betty. Your personality is different from my personality. And the Holy Spirit knows your downside and your uprising. So he has to deal with you according to you. Amen. 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 God bless you. We give God glory. We truly thank God. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, which we will continue teaching on the Holy Spirit. For the Bible declares what it would do. It will saturate this church. Not the church, but every individual. We are the church. So it will. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you next Sunday. Amen. 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 Is anyone in our midst today that if you need prayer, the Bible says pray the prayer of faith, and guess what? The Holy Spirit will raise you up. I cannot heal you. I, I, I'm not your healer. I can't present the healer to you, and I can lay hands on you, but what heals you is the Spirit of, is the Holy Spirit through me. Because if I was the healer, you think I would, I would never get sick. No, it's what I'm housing around and what you're housing around. And once we release it, it heals your flesh. Amen. So if anyone in our midst, and you know what? It, it's, I don't know why people think it's a sin to be sick and you don't have enough faith because you're sick. That's the biggest lie that the devil ever spit it out of hell to keep people enslaved, making you think, well, you shouldn't be sick. No, no, flesh is flesh. Yeah. If flesh would get sick, now your spirit would never be sick. Your spirit never gets sick. Your spirit is never be defeated. It's flesh. Amen. 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 God bless you. See you next Sunday. I 